Well, this is kind of sad but interesting. I just opened my Yahoo page and here's the, you know, the stupid French mainstream media news. You know, they just pick a bit of this, a bit of that. I confess I do look at it. And that's how I know that the very first news release I saw about the second Malaysian airplane down in the Ukraine, Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, lost contact with it right away. And I don't like that. I, I wish everybody would stop focusing on the Ukraine and Russia. Yes, it is sad there was an accident. Um, but let's be logical here. You know, first things first. How could they lose contact with a plane right after takeoff? What did it do? Did it go off the radar? I don't think that's possible. In the Netherlands? I mean, if it got to too low of an altitude and it crashed, somebody would have heard it or seen it, you know. Uh, I mean, the cows would have at least been killed. There are a lot of cows in the Netherlands. And this is not to denigrate the experience. And also, fellow Americans, I do not understand why you are so obsessed with these planes which are not America's as far as I know there were no Americans on either flight there definitely weren't any on the second one it wasn't over our airspace you know hey and the Ukraine okay they have problems there the US funded that they started it they started the problems in Iran at the beginning of the 50s, in Iraq by funding Saddam Hussein, Libya, the Middle East, and a lot of other places I can think of. Okay? Oh, all right. Uh, I mean, be logical. It's like writing a computer program. If step A is not robust, you cannot proceed to assume this or that or write this or that of the program or worry about, you know, well, what flight path was it on? I mean, Shifal Airport lost contact with it. Okay, does that mean they lost communications with it? The comms were down? You know, there is standard operating procedure for when that happens. There is. Whether it's off the radar, which is weird, or they lose communications. Fighter jets have to be scrambled immediately for either search or rescue, or to surround it, to signal it, and to safely escort it to landing. This happened in Paris a few years ago. I remember it. Oh, uh, near La Défense, which is like the Manhattan of Paris. It's actually over on the west side of Paris. It's not even in Paris. Uh, stunned residents and workers were really amazed to see this going on right in front of them. Uh, you know, the, the jets were scrambled immediately and they surrounded the plane, they signaled it, you know, they tipped their wings and they took it to safe landing back at the airport or another airport where it was okay. Nobody was hurt. I mean, you just can't have that. What did Shefal Airport do? They did not... They have a lot of explaining to do. And Josh Galt has got quite a good video up. And he's Dutch, and he even berates the Dutch uh, in Dutch for a bit. Um... Amsterdam has primary responsibility for the second Malaysian plane. I want to make that very, very clear. And shame on America. I am shame, ashamed of my own country. We have forgotten that we, for example, two that I can think of, shot down an innocent passenger plane somewhere out in the sea in 1988 by accident, the military... And also, in 1996, an innocent passenger jet. You know, there were hundreds of people on, on both of them. 
And the second one, they were they had left Atlanta where the Olympics were going on. They stopped briefly in New York City and it was Air France and they were heading to Paris. And the military shot them down. Right off Long Island, there were two credible witnesses who spoke up right away. I heard that immediately. And sure enough, in both cases, they hemmed and they hawed and they eventually confessed and paid huge damages very quietly to all the victims' families. And guess who paid for that? We did. The American taxpayers. All right? Americans have the shortest memories. And believe me, a lot of people do. You know? It's not just an American thing. But I just get fed up because I expect better from my own country, which I know is foolish. You know? So... Amsterdam has primary responsibility. Quit worrying about this other stuff later. Yes, it's sad. Why do I care? Because I'm European now. I have double nationality. Did that plane fly without communications over all those countries of Europe for hours? Well, then we've all got a lot of explaining to do, don't we? But Amsterdam first. Be logical, she fault. And I am not the only journalist, and I have 39 years of experience, who spotted this in the first releases. Oh, okay. Now this, I'm just looking at now. And the source is Le Monde, which is a major, major, major... French newspaper. It's very high quality. I could not read it when I first moved to France 21 years ago. <coughs> it was a bit too dense for me and a bit too serious. I had to start with the lighter press, lighter reading materials. But now I, it's, it's kind of a go-to for me. And I still read in print. Americans, you are behind a virtual curtain. I have seen, and I stay in touch with home, even though I've only been back three times in the past 21 years. The last two times were horrible and horrifying, and I will not go back to that gulag. Um, use foreign servers, not browsers, to look at foreign news regularly. If you only speak English, okay, there's a lot of different countries in the world who speak English. If you speak any other language, look in that language. If you can at least read another language, I can read in Spanish. I really don't speak it and cannot understand it very well. Do that. And for myself, Italian, I can understand that. I can read that. No problem. No problem. And French, of course. Just do that, okay, please. You're going to be shocked. You best be sitting down. The lies I have seen told by mainstream media in the United States over the past two years particularly are outrageous. Outrageous. Ah, oh, really. I'm so sorry for you guys back there. Get out while you can. Now it costs 450 U.S. dollars since 2010 to even renounce your citizenship. And I don't want to do that. I contributed. I had declared work for 22 years there. I didn't leave until I was 37. A lot of Americans cannot even get a passport now. The U.S. dollar is unwanted in increasingly large portions of the world. American persons are not able to get a lot of other citizenships now. Forget Asia, and I know that here I am both U.S. and French, and I think I'm going to have to close a bank account at ING, because since last July, 
they will not allow any U.S. person to have any kind of bank account with them. And they've been fussing about it recently. And I said to them, that's rather ridiculous. I never go back. And I'm, I've been fully French since the 90s. You know, so I don't know, but I'm prepared to close the account. I know HSBC, and I hate them, uh, in 2010 would not allow me to open a U.S. dollar account, nor any account, because I'm still a U.S. citizen. The U.S. is being shut out. The rest of the world is moving on. In November of 2010, China and Russia signed an accord to trade with one another, with each other, in their own currencies for oil and other commodities. Up until recently, the U.S. has crushed any nation which dared to not use the U.S. dollar as its basis of reference. You know, Iraq, Libya come to mind. But can they do it to Russia and China? No, they can't. When I was in Turkey in 2010, they had always accepted U.S. dollars, but that year it was only Turkish lira and euros. No more dollars anywhere. And in 2010, in Turkey and in France, my couple of U.S. credit cards that I still had were unwelcome because they were American. Well, I paid off my debts anyway, and I got rid of them. I cut them up, I wrote the, the letters, I was very polite. Everything was paid off, closed up. Okay, so I... People try to get out while you can. I know that that sounds nasty, but I am so glad that I figured this out in the 80s. We were warned about this in the 80s, America. Publicly. It was on TV ads for years. Made in the USA, you know, and these ads about how America and our future children and stuff were going to be crushed under debt. And I I don't know about you guys, but I took that seriously and I started planning and saving and researching to get out. And I did get out in 94. I was 37 already when I finally left. Um well, I say um too much. Uh we were warned we were warned. I went to see the debt clock guy personally in New York. I wrote to him in 1990. He was very gracious. I said, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I would just like to meet you and see who you are and just chat a little bit. And he and his very polite secretary at the Durst organization absolutely gave me the appointment. No problem. I just had to write a letter and a good 20 minutes or so with Mr. Durst, who was quite elderly then. He explained his business and stuff. Um, I know I'm forgetting a couple of points. Oh, yeah. In the 80s, rather than listen to those clear warnings, Americans seemed far more interested in dumb stunts such as Hands Across America and competitive eating. And I thought, oh, no, we're sunk. This says, Air Algeria announced that they lost contact during the night with flight AH-5017, which left Thursday, the 24th of July, from Wad. Gadugu in Burkina Faso to Algiers. The information was made public at the end of the morning by the company cited by the agency APS. It was an MD-83 with 110 passengers and six crew members on board. Uh, 
Afrete or Pre La Compagnie Espagnole Suite d'Air. I think they were working with with uh, the, the Spanish Swift Air. You know, they they switch off and lend each other stuff and get people around. All the airlines do that. Well, a lot of them do. This confirmed, and they confirmed that the airplane, the, the jet, the plane had not arrived at its destination. The flight, which left Ouagadougou a little after one in the morning, local time, should have landed around 5.10 in the morning in the Algerian capital. The navigation services Ressence, their junior contact Okay, they, they lost contact with it 50 minutes after it took off. Lost it in the Malian airspace. Okay, over Mali, contact was lost. Après un changement de cap. I don't know what that means, a change of route. The, the plane was not far from the Algerian border when we asked the crew to reroute because of poor visibility and to avoid a risk of collision with another plane which was connecting Alger Bamako. According to the Weather Channel in France, this flight crossed a zone where numerous storms had erupted with, uh, I guess, turbulence and lightning and stuff. Despite a military intervention in course, the situation rests unstable in northern Mali, occupied for several months in 2012 by jihadist armed groups. Al Air Algeria has put in place an emergency plan, but has not yet spoken of a crash. Okay, first release that I've seen. <laughs>